Morning, my name is Duncan. I work for Staffordshire Wildlife Trust. I'm the Forest School Training Officer uh, and I work within our people engagement team. Um, we do a lot of pond dipping at Staffordshire Wildlife Trust. It's a, a really engaging activity for children and adults. So today we're out on one of our pond dipping platforms and we're going to be doing some pond dipping. Um, on our pond dipping platform we've got a nice kickboard here just to uh, help people stay on the platform and when we do pond dipping we've obviously got a nice net for pond dipping. Got a nice extendable handle on this just means that you're not having to bend down too much and overreach into the pond. When we do pond dip close to the edge um, we tend to always kneel because you're just in a more stable position when you're kneeling so um, you're ready to brace yourself uh, if anyone sort of knocks you from behind or you lose your balance. Um, you've also got a stronger sense of gravity when you're in a kneeling position as well. So it's, it's June at the moment, so the pond is really heaving with a lot of uh, wildlife. We've got all sorts of things in this particular pond, but what we're going to be pond dipping for today is mainly the invertebrates. So it's the creatures without backbones. So we're talking about a lot of sort of nymphs, dragonfly nymphs, damselfly nymphs, mayfly nymphs, uh, also things like diving beetles. Um, we've got water scorpions on this site, uh, water boatmen, but also a lot of the smaller things, so midge larvae, whirly gig beetles. We also do have some water stick insects at this site, uh, but we don't tend to get them out in the day as much. So they tend to come out more at night. So I'm going to get some pond dipping kit together, and I'll show you guys the sort of pond dipping kit that we use. First thing with our nets is we always make sure our nets are not kind of left down like this. They're a bit of a trip hazard if we leave them like that. So we tend to always put them away from the edge. Health and safety wise, when you're around water, safety is the first concern. So today I've got a fully packed first aid kit. So we'll have this ready in case there are any incidents. Uh, and really just watch out for your own safety, but also watch out for others uh, that are with you. Um, Hands, anything that's going in the water, you ideally just don't want to have any open cuts, any open wounds. If you have, you know, plaster or some barrier tape. Um, there are some bacteria in this pond that could give you an upset stomach. So it's just mainly stopping that bacteria getting into open cuts. And also if you were to fall in, you wouldn't want to necessarily ingest any of the water. It could give you an upset stomach. So pond dipping kit wise, got a nice bucket here, which enables me to get some water out. We've got an ID key, which is really useful for when we catch creatures, especially if we're working with children, because we've got nice pictures on here that they can have a look at. It's also a key that you can work through through the questions. With invertebrates in the pond, there is a huge amount of biodiversity. So there are multiple species for different groups. So if we're thinking water beetles, there's so many different species of water beetle. The same with say like the mayfly nymphs. When we're working with children, we kind of just get it down to family. So if it's a mayfly nymph, we'll stop it, we'll stop it there. We've also got some magnifying glasses to help us look at things closer. Paint palette, really useful piece of kit. What we'll do is we'll put, put some water in the little dimples and then we can put individual creatures into these little areas so we can get a closer look at them. Spoons, really good for capturing our creatures. Uh, as we said, a lot of them are invertebrates, so they don't have a backbone. So we have to be really careful when we're capturing them. We want to capture them, find out about them, but we also want to let them go afterwards so that they can return to their habitat. And of course, nice pond dipping tray. Pond dipping tray and the, and the paint palette are white, just to give us a good contrast when we're looking at the creatures. I'll pop a little bit of water in. There we go. Not too much. And we don't want too much debris in there at the moment, too many weeds or too much sediment. So we want to be able to see the creatures. So we'll pop that out of the way. Now, typically, if we were pond dipping with a large group, we would move all of this equipment to the back of the platform. Um, slips, trips and falls being the biggest risk. So we don't want any trips close to the water's edge. We tend to move all of this stuff back. But for today, we're just going to have it here so we can do a bit of a demo. Might be a good idea as well to pop some water into our paint palettes so that they're ready. Already we've got creatures just from the water. 
Put some water in there. Put some water in this one. There we go. Now we get to the fun part, which involves our net. So when we're pond dipping with a net, got to be careful, not just at this end, just tends to be this end that can cause more trouble because when you're pond dipping, that end's going round and round. And so just be aware of people behind you when you're pond dipping. So we get close to the edge. If we go too deep within a pond, you'll tend to drag along the bottom and you will capture things, but you'll also get a lot of sediment and gunk and stones. You'll get that into your tray and it's harder to see things. So we tend to go along the surface and kind of the mid water. Most of the life in a pond is in the first foot and a half of water depth, just because of the sunlight penetration. A figure of eight is a good thing to do as well. So doing a figure eight within the water, lots of the creatures are hiding in this refuge. So they're in the weeds and in the, uh, in the reeds here. So running the net along the reeds, getting down uh, in the stems is a really good idea to just loosen the creatures. So we'll have a little test pond dip and we'll see what we can catch. And you can be quite firm Try different areas of the pond. You can go along the surface, go mid-water. You can go deeper if you want, but we really don't want to be scraping on the bottom just because we'll get a lot of sediment. So, looks like we've got a fair few things. We'll take it over. Most of these creatures can survive out of the water for a short period of time. We turn over our net. I always try and give it a little bit of a dip in the water. So if you've got any creatures on the net that they can be rinsed off. And then we'll get our net out of the way so it's not a trip hazard. And we've got all sorts in our tray at the moment. Any debris that kind of is in the way, we tend to put it back in the pond. So anything that comes out of the pond goes back in the pond because there could still be creatures living on it. Got our spoon here we can use to break some of this debris up. And we have got so many things in here already. The tendency with children and younger people is they'll want to stir the water up to try and release the creatures. But then everything is moving and it's really hard to see what's debris and what's a creature. So sometimes let the water calm and you'll see the water come alive. So at the moment, there are so many things wiggling around in here. And we can actually start capturing some of the creatures. Got all sorts of juvenile creatures in here at the moment. We've got some big ones as well. So the biggest thing we've got in here straight away is this pond snail here. So a pointed pond snail. It's got a lovely pointed shell. Looks like it's uh, had some recent damage to the shell, but the sh the snail is still in good shape, so we can pop him in one. At this time of year, it tends to be heaving with creatures anyway. Got a spider, but I don't think he meant to be in the pond. I think he's fallen in the pond. So he looks like a land or a terrestrial spider, so we're gonna pop him over there so he can, he can crawl back to safety. Just looking in here at the moment, we have got water boatmen. We've got lots of greater water boatmen. Uh, we've got water fleas. We've got some mayfly nymph. We've got some freshwater hog louse. And probably more if we allow it to settle and watch the creatures come out. We hopefully will have a caddis fly today. Pop that in and see if it comes alive. Let's see if we can capture one of our hog lice. Yep. So this is where our paint palette really comes in handy because it allows us to separate the creatures and put them in different areas. Always remembering though that they need water. So give them plenty of water. Now, a lot of people won't know that some pond creatures can fly as well. So things like boatmen, beetles, they can fly. So if they really get fed up, they can fly away. It also helps them colonize ponds. So when you're creating a pond from scratch, 
there's no need really to bring anything into the pond. If you leave it over winter, it will usually be naturally colonized by invertebrates. Also, if you have any birds that visit that pond, whether it be a duck, whether it be a heron, they can often bring sort of weed and uh, seeds on their feet. And they can also bring in invertebrates like that as well. So you don't necessarily have to stock this in your pond. Give it time and it will naturally occur. We've got some water boatmen. We haven't got anything too predatory in here at the moment. Sometimes we'll catch us, capture certain creatures and they will, if we put them in a small space together, they, they will turn on each other. Uh, things like uh, the diving beetles, the diving beetle larvae, dragonfly nymphs as well, they are quite ferocious predators, so we won't necessarily put them in together. But we've got so much going on in here. I might have another little dip, see if we can capture some of the, uh, the bigger inhabitants of the pond. It really is teeming in there. There's so much movement. We'll have another little dip. We'll try some different areas of the pond. Yeah, really don't be afraid to kind of get in the weeds and give it a bit of a jiggle. Some of the creatures are going to be resting on the reeds and on the pond weed, so it's good to get in amongst that vegetation. You can have a quick look in your net when you've dipped, but the problem is you often won't see it in the net. So it's always a good idea to get the net in the water as soon as possible. I'm gonna go for a bit more. Might try some different areas over here because within different areas in the pond, you're gonna get different animals. So there's different living conditions, whether it be sunlight, whether it be uh, more organic matter. Um, so you'll get different species at different areas. Some species like open water, some species like to be close to the edge. There we go. So we'll bring it over, turn it over, Give it a bit of a rinse in the water and get your net out the way. So already we've got quite a lot of sort of organic matter and debris in here. So if it does get in the way, you can just move it. But as we said, anything that comes from the pond, we tend to return to the pond. So it's gonna be all sorts of seed pods, leaves, grasses. There's some beach beach masting here from the beech trees. So just move that out of the way to give yourself a clearer view of the creatures. There we go. Now I've stirred it up a bit, so we'll have to let the water calm down a bit, and then we can have a look what we've got inside our tray. So again, it's still absolutely teeming with life. And you see if we can, we've got, we've got a blood worm in here. So I'll see if I can capture that. Blood worm is a little worm, bright red. It's often quite a popular fishing bait with fishermen. It's a, a, a larvae of a midge species. Um, and it's a bright red little worm. There he is wiggling. Now the smaller the creature, the harder it is to catch in your spoon. Yeah, we got him. He's in our paint palette now. Lots of water boatmen. It's June, so a lot of these creatures uh, are this year's creatures. So they're still quite small. We've got a caddis fly, which is a good find. Only a little one. This is where it's good to have a magnifying glass with the smaller creatures. You can use a magnifying glass. On a hot day, when you've got the sun, just be aware of magnifying glass in the sun as well. What else have we got in here today? Lots of freshwater hog louse. The freshwater hog louse is um, it's a detritivore, so they tend to be at the bottom of the pond, they eat all the organic matter, um, 
and help the recycling process within the pond. Um, they look much like a shrimp uh, and they're a close relative to the woodlouse, which you tend to get on land. And they do the same job. They devour organic matter and help the recycling. So much in here. Lots of boatmen. I'd like to see if we can catch some of the bigger ones today. Oh, we've got a mayfly nymph. There we go. Little mayfly nymph in there. When we look at ID identification of the different creatures, it's really good to get a really close look at them because it'll ask you for certain identifying characteristics. So for a lot of the, the nymph, the juvenile stages of, of flies, dragonflies, mayflies, alderflies, damselflies, an important part of ID is the number of tails. So mayfly, damselflies, they tend to have three sections to their tail. Some of the creatures that we have in the pond, we haven't caught them yet, say for instance the water scorpion, they have a, a breathing tube. So it looks like a tail, comes out of their back end, but it's actually a breathing tube, which enables them to be under the water, but still connected to the atmosphere outside. What else have we got? Much of the same at the moment, so many little creatures. Absolutely hundreds of juvenile water boatmen. There's some water fleas in there. But so many boatmen. Like a lot of smaller animals, they have so many babies in order to, um, to get by the predation. So most of these little creatures, they're going to be eaten by other creatures within the food chain. It's very much a jungle in a pond. Um, and a lot of these smaller creatures are part of the food chain for bigger creatures. I'm trying to find some different things at the moment. We've got another mayfly nymph. Very hard to capture. There he is. We'll pop him in there. Uh, it's fascinating as these small creatures are, when we're pond dipping with children, they tend to want to capture the bigger creatures. So things like the dragonfly nymphs, the water scorpions. So we will have another little dip and we'll see what else we can catch. So many water boatmen. We'll have another little dip. Hmm. So try and dip in different places. With a pond like this as well, it's quite a large pond, so it can be dipped quite regularly, but it is good every now and again to give it a bit of a break. If you've dipped it quite intensively one day, give it a few days off, allow the creatures to recover. Also, because we've got this refuge, which is the larger vegetation behind this mesh, it means that the creatures can just swim away and they can hide in that refuge. Pond dipping, we tend to do kind of March to October. So during the winter months, life tends to die down in the pond. A lot of creatures will go dormant. They'll go into the sediment at the bottom of the pond. Or a lot of creatures that complete their life cycle in a year will die off and there'll be the eggs left in the pond for the next year. We'll have a little dip. I would like to catch a water scorpion today. We have caught water scorpion this year, so we know they're in here. Again, you won't know what you've got until you get it into your tray. Because it's June, there is a lot of debris in the pond because we've just kind of finishing the flowering season for a lot of the trees. So they're dropping a lot of organic matter into the pond. Oh, more mayfly nymphs. I wouldn't want to predict how many uh, boatmen we have in here at the moment. It's probably in the thousands. So many teeny juvenile boatmen. 
but no big creatures as of yet. We do have toads that breed into this pond as well. So occasionally we will catch toad tadpoles, uh, but I think a lot of them are nearly ready to leave the pond at this time of year. No big ones. What can be handy sometimes when our tray gets really, really busy is to return them back to the pond and get fresh water. So, the main priority when we're pond dipping is safety. And it, it really is safety of ourselves, but also safety of the, the plants and animals that reside in the pond. So if we're ever returning any creatures to the pond, we have to do it in a really sensitive manner. So if we take the net, if we take the tray and we empty it from a high distance, that distance is huge for the small animals. So whenever we return a tray to the pond, we want to get that as close to the water surface as possible and gently pour it. To get it as close to the water surface, you ideally want to don't, don't want to make any splashing noises. You'll still have a lot of things in the tray, so you may need to give it a bit of a swill out, just so those creatures don't end up left in the tray. A bit more of a swill. There we go. And again, we've got a clean tray. And then if we wanted to carry on dipping, again, get some more water. And we can start again. Always start with fresh water. You don't want to be gathering water with loads of debris because you're going to naturally bring debris in with the net. So try and get some nice fresh surface water for your base water in your tray. Our snail's active. And we do have a caddis fly in here as well. Caddis flies, they are a great creature for um, children and adults to see. So best way to describe it sometimes is they're a little, um, they're a fly nymph. So uh, once they've uh, transformed into a fly, they are flying around. But when they're in the pond as a juvenile, they're a nymph and they have a very sensitive abdomen. They're quite soft. So they make themselves a little sleeping bag. Uh, Sometimes they'll use like the tube of a, of a grass stem or a reed stem, or sometimes they make, make it out of bits of twig or bits of stone. So often you won't recognize that it's an actual creature. You'll just start seeing a grass stem slowly move across the bottom of the tray. And we've got a couple of caddis flying here today. The blood worms out as well. I'll see if I can get anything at that end because we've got more got more debris. When we do this for kids as well, we can talk about sort of decomposition, you know, all the animals, when they die, where do they go? What happens to their bodies? What happens to all the leaves that fall in the pond? Um, and why is this stuff important? And one of the big sort of maintenance tips is we say that, you know, once a year, kind of October time, is to take out a third of your living and your dead vegetation. Take it out of the pond, put it at the side of the pond for a week to drain so any creatures can escape, and then you can compost it. Because ponds, they're, due to succession, they naturally want to fill in. Uh, especially if you've got trees overhead, you'll end up with leaf litter in, and a pond without it, a small pond with no maintenance, you know, over five or 10 years, it will disappear. It will just become a marshy area and eventually it will just become land. So being able to take out some of this stuff once a year um, just to stop the pond from, from slowly filling in. No, lots of water boatmen, lots of... Oh, we've got a freshwater shrimp in this one. Try and capture the shrimpy. Come on, shrimp. Oh. There's a certain skill catching little beasties with a spoon. I'll put the freshwater shrimp in there, it's quite small. The freshwater sh shrimp is quite similar to the, to the hog louse, apart from the freshwater, uh, the hog louse lays flat, so its feet are on the bottom, and you see it from the back, uh, and the freshwater shrimp tends to be on its side, and it swims around on its side. Yeah, 
Yeah, much of the same. More boatmen. Oh, another damselfly. So when when you're finished pond dipping, a really good tip can be just to give your net a really good rinse. So if if you've pond dipped and you're going to put your net away for the day, there can still be creatures on the net. If they're left on the net, the net will dry out, the creatures will die. So whenever we put the nets away, it's always a good idea to just give them a quick rinse. So run them so that they turn inside and out, a bit like a sock. So they're in the water and they're going inside, they're going outside and it just flushes any creatures off. So I do that a couple of times in nice open water. Give it a shake just to get any creatures off and leave you with a nice clean net. Yeah, so our net is nice and clean and hopefully we're not taking any creatures with us when we put our net away.